My guest today is Dr. Stephanie Gutnick. Dr. Gutnick obtained her doctorate and MBA from Edinburgh Business School. She was formerly the head of Digital Out of Home for Yahoo, and she is currently the Chief Strategy Officer at Billups. She is a genuine expert in digital out-of-home advertising, and today we are going to be talking about some of the challenges and opportunities. Stephanie, I am so glad that you're able to join me. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me, James. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Hey, let's start with um, what is Billups? For those who aren't familiar, can you please describe the company and the space that you play in? Definitely. So Billups, first and foremost, is the last name of the founder, Benj Billups. And uh, the agency has been around for 20 years. We celebrated our 20th anniversary last year, uh, started out of Portland, Oregon, and now we are the largest independent out-of-home media agency in North America and really expanding globally super quickly at this point. I, uh, I was brought into the role in September of 2023, and promptly after I started, uh, we acquired an agency in Toronto, which is where I live. So now we're covering Canada in that regard, another one in Malaysia, and another one in Belgium. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. And, and congratulations on the on the role. Ah, thank um, you. Stepping back, um, I used to naively hear digital out of home and think, oh, that's digital billboards. But I know in reality, it is much more than that. So can you help define the digital out of home space for me, please? Definitely. And you're not alone. Most people think digital billboards when they hear digital out of home. Uh, but really, the inventory spans any screen that you will be engaging with outside of your home. So from the minute that you get on the subway, uh, if there are screens in the station or even on the train sometimes, um, or if you are heading to an airport, you and I both travel a fair bit for business, you'll see some great displays in and around the airports and in the backs of taxi cabs, on the tops of taxi cabs, shopping malls, office elevators, the list goes on, cinema. And... Um and when you're thinking about the, all the different number of places they can be, is it what is the biggest advantage of digital over traditional static out of home advertising? It's a good question. Uh, there is a, a steady conversion of traditional faces, the print faces, to digital screens in certain locations, uh, but traditional won't be going away. Brands still love traditional out of home for the 24 seven awareness play. They just get to own that space. And there are certain um, ways to use traditional, like a wallscape, for example, where you'll see like a big Calvin Klein ad on the side of a building in Soho. It just has that impact that will remain um, a, a marketer favorite. But with digital, the advantage there really becomes the flexibility. You and I both met when we were working at Yahoo and um, having programmatic capabilities and automation applied to the out of home space has really been a game changer in being able to bring in um, more, more flexible marketing dollars and introduce the space to some smaller companies too that really need to get their name out there and who maybe didn't think it was possible before when you had to have these massive type campaigns. So digital just make things a lot more flexible. You can start and stop campaigns when you want, switch up the creative. And um, once I was at an agency, this was years ago, but they didn't realize that like, you can have weather triggers, for example. So if it's raining, throw in an ad that's different than if it's sunny. And this can um, you know, happen pretty much instantly, right? Because there's a feed with that local weather station to the screen, right? So um, anything that you can do in digital that's more conditions-based or triggers-based, you can apply to digital out of home as well. When we think about how um, ads get shared through the space, what are the usual models at the moment? Because if I'm driving down a freeway, I might see ads being rotated every few seconds. I can imagine that there might be still some areas that might even be a takeover for one advertiser to rotate their own creative through. And I can imagine that there are different models, as you said, just triggers that would, would cause the rotation. So as you're thinking about that, and I'm particularly getting to what are, are there standards around these kinds of things in the same way that other industries have mo moved to like a 30 second creative or a 15 second? What are the standards right now? So 
With out of home, um, particularly digital, it used to be a loop based model to your point earlier where let's say for a billboard, it was every six to nine seconds, say the ad would change and that was just a fixed loop. Now with automation and programmatic and ad serving capabilities in the digital out of home space, it's much more dynamic. And again, you can buy out of home screens for their location. It's definitely a good way to do things. We talk a lot about context in the overall advertising landscape. You can pick a location-based context and that's perfect. But with this new way of ad serving, you can also pick your audiences and the ad will play based on who is most likely to see the ad at that time. So we've we've now brought data into the out of home space and we can judge by um, the audiences as well. And I would say too, um, in terms of the standards of, of ad slots or, or times, it's totally going to depend based on, um, again, the location and the dwell time of that audience. So what we've done for brands in certain instances, we can do a full time square takeover. All of those digital assets can be at one time for a certain brand. It's a beautiful visual experience. So that's an option. But also if, um, if your target audience is in like a restaurant or bar situation where they're gonna be there for a while and we've got screens running content, but also ads, that's digital out of home. It's a kind of fuzzy line because maybe you also would think of it as connected television, uh, but that's digital out of home and those ads can be longer. And in certain places, video ads and out of home can even include audio. Yeah. So, so talk to me about the different dimensions that advertisers care about, because the way you, as you've been describing this, I mean, digital is complex enough as it is with all the different segmentation and ways you can cut the problem. But yeah. as you just been introduced a few new dimensions, things like dwell time and the different audience composition. When you are getting questions from new advertisers who are thinking about the space, what are the sort of different dimensions that they're focused on or, or might have concerns about as they're moving from more traditional media? So, you know, what's funny is I feel like there is a bit of a double standard when it comes to out of home because marketers that are new to the channel will often say things like, but well, how do you know that someone actually saw the ad? And to me, you can just flip that right back at them. It's like, how do you know somebody saw your TV commercial? Was that not used as a bathroom break or, you know, running into the kitchen for a snack? Um, I love ads of all kinds, so I'm going to want to watch the TV commercials, but <laughs> I work in the industry, so maybe it's an anomaly. Uh, and and what Bill Epps has done is one of the reasons why I was so excited to join the company is we've applied a lot of technology to the out of home space. And so there's some proprietary and patented technology to help understand um, viewability and visibility uh, and attention. So that kind of goes through, viewability was a huge thing in advertising a couple of years ago. Attention's now the hot topic. We can look at both and we do so in measuring view sheds. So we can look at if someone's driving down a freeway, we can have an understanding of if there, there might be some street furniture, like a bus shelter with an ad on the side um, or some of those billboards. And we have an understanding of, is there anything obstructing the view? Like a, a tree, for example, what's in the way? Yeah. And also based on people's likelihood to um, where they're going to be looking, we can see what parts of the boards or the screens they're actually going to be able to see or be drawn to. So there's a lot of science that you can apply when it comes to selecting what inventory is right for a campaign. So just to make sure I understand that correctly, does that yeah. mean that essentially every time you're trying to serve on a new screen, it needs to get mapped in some way in terms of its geolocation, the potential obstacles, the potential audience. So for, I mean, that's that feels um, time intensive, labor intensive, is it? It is. I mean, that's why we've applied this technology to help the media planners on our teams do things more efficiently. Um, but certainly there's a big chunk of in our data sciences team, there's data cleaning that goes on with the inventory that we bring on board. Um, and, you know, it goes back to why 
specialists won't be going away anytime soon, even with the introduction of technology, because people still really need to understand the landscape of things to make sure that these ads are appearing on boards and screens that will be seen by consumers. Got it. Yeah. Well, when you think about the advertisers who are most excited or the biggest opportunity for digital out of home, is it the traditional sort of out of home advertisers who are now excited about the move to more options to be able to rotate and have different visuals? Or is it that um, traditional, you know, web based advertisers are now seeing that they can move their assets into the out of home landscape? Help me think about those trade offs. It's such a good question. Um, where we see a lot of excitement is again, most people don't realize that out of home is as measurable as it actually is. And even with um, device IDs and cookies going away, you know, Billups has measurement methodologies that can accommodate full funnel. So whether it's brand awareness or brand studies all the way through website conversions or app downloads, we've been running this for years uh, to accommodate GDPR and our clients in Europe and even in the States. So um, what I would say about that is performance marketers who might have said a little while ago, mm, I'm not interested in out of home, that's a brand play. They're starting to invest more money because A, they realize that there does need to be a brand play in their holistic marketing approach. It can't just be lower funnel because then you're not growing your consumer base. Um, but also that out of home has that dual function. You get the big creative that gets noticed, but then you can also measure it. So definitely an increase in interest by performance marketers who've been educated on what the channel can do. And then if you look at just the biggest marketers in general, McDonald's, huge fan of out of home and they get really creative they can have fun with it because their brand is so well known um there was a campaign that ran in toronto and parts of canada and i believe it won a can line a couple years ago where mcdonald's would just have parts of the arch um in the billboard to advise drivers of like where they should be turning to get to a mcdonald's location so they just it was really smart um Apple's a really big user of out of home. It's all these big marketers that people aspire to be. They probably over index in terms of their out of home spend. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've already talked about the complexity of digital advertising, which I'm always amazed at. Uh, I think the number of ad formats, the complexity of auctions, there's always some major challenge that needs to be addressed to move things forward. And when I think about digital out of home, it's still relatively nascent. And, and I would assume that some of the standards are still evolving. When you look at sort of the biggest areas that are, <clears throat> excuse me, challenges that need to be addressed or where standards need to be established, what, what would that area be? It's a really great question because out of home is not, you can't really standardize the format the same way you would a mobile ad um, or an ad that appears on a, a connected television or in your laptop, for example. So because we cannot standardize the creative assets, we can just look at ways to make it easier. Um, so if we're looking at programmatic, for example, maybe it's helping the client choose similar aspect ratios so that we don't have to make so many different types of content. Um, but that's also the thrill of it. Creative agencies get really excited when they know that out of home is part of the plan and they can develop specifically for some spectacular sites, right? Or, um, you know, depending on the location, they can just get specific and blend in with the space in a way that people really enjoy, which I think is one of the reasons why people respond to out of home in a more favorable way compared to other ad types. It doesn't feel like it's interrupting the consumption of content. Uh, it's usually like a little bit of entertainment or information while you're waiting for something to happen, you know, while you're on the subway or, or in the airport. So, people respond favorably and then there's usually some positive implications to the brand because of that got it yeah. um you've already talked i think you said people aren't aware of how well targeted it's possible to have digital out of home mm -hmm. be and one of the 
perce historical perceptions has been that it is less targeted than some traditional digital marketing where the user might have a cookie or a unique ID. But we've seen fantasy versions or futuristic versions portrayed in movies where someone walks by a screen, there's facial recognition, uh, or maybe it's a signal from a device that they're using where they could get a targeted ad. Do you see evolution in that direction or do you see the privacy concerns being being too strong? I always know when someone's new to the industry because they'll be doing a presentation and they'll bring up that clip from Minority Report where Tom Cruise is you know, greeted personally in the store. Yeah. And uh, I think that, that technology exists to a certain extent, right? So sometimes there are going to be um, cameras with the screens to understand you know, the gender, the age, the emotion, uh, the dwell time and attention time to the screen, you can glean all of that information from a camera. Um, whether or not people like this, you know, kind of remains to be determined, but the fact is it's totally privacy compliant. N nobody, nothing's being stored in that sense and you're not identifying the specific person. So I think even if you could get there why would the industry want to? Um, and there are certain examples where people can engage. I've seen, um, you know, people might want to see their faces on screens in Times Square, and sometimes brands enable them to engage with content so that that can happen. Um, but that is very much with their consent. And so I, I can't see that becoming an issue. What could become an issue is what's affecting the rest of the industry. And again, that's just cookie loss and uh, device ID loss because out of home to date has has relied so heavily on mobile forms of, of measurement. Uh, talk to me about that because I hadn't thought about, I, I could imagine why device ID or mobile identifier would impact digital out of home. I wouldn't have thought cookie loss would. So can you talk me through, maybe just start with what are the identifiers that are currently used? Yeah, I mean, even in terms of, okay, how would you determine if that led to a website conversion? So, uh, right? Yep. Yeah, so that um, is, a, is a means where cookie loss comes into play. And um, that's where, again, Billups has a sciences team that has been working to understand methodologies that can strip away the device ID uh, and are not reliant. A lot, of it, a lot of it can be like causal modeling, for example. And it's funny, when I talk to our CTO uh, about what he and his team have created, because it blows my mind, uh, and I'm so excited for clients to try it out and see what happens. I always ask how detailed I can get in terms of explaining how we do it. And he's never fussed. He's like, this isn't the secret sauce. The secret sauce comes into the actual understanding of statistics and making sure that the team is telling the truth. Because as we know, and you, you know, you didn't mention this, but you also have a doctorate. And so we've spent some time with statistics and uh, you can make a lot of stories based on the numbers that come in um, and, Billups and, and the CTO's team are just very adamant that we just tell what the story is and that's how you learn. So um, that's something I'm very proud of about the company. Okay. Yeah. Um, tell me, digital out of home and retail media networks. Mm. So, you know, we've seen some examples, Marriott Springs to mind, where they've been putting screens in and at the same time trying to build out their own retail media network. Uh, do you see that the sort of traditional hotels, airlines, retailers, et cetera, moving into digital out of home and building retail media networks is a trend or are we just seeing some outliers at the moment? Oh, I mean, the term retail media is a little bit trendy. When I started off uh, my career, I was at News America, which is part of News Corp. And um, at that time, in-store advertising was called trade. And then eventually it's shopper marketing. And now, I think, you know, we've hit the retail media. I hope what the attention to um, the buzz is doing is helping everybody look at the marketing dollars more holistically. Because when we think about it, yeah, there are shopper marketing dollars in one bucket and advertising dollars in another. And if we can look at them together, all the better, right? We have a better understanding of, of the, 
the shopping process and that path to purchase. Um, and when it comes to the blend between out of home, I am very much enjoying watching it all take shape uh, because we have retailers who are implementing you know, screens and the like in store. This is nothing new. Tesco through JC Deco has been doing this in the UK. And that's just one example for a, a long time years. Um, and, you know, making sure that ads are, are updated based on time of day, day of week, promotions, just these little things that make sense. So that is increasing. And then what we're also seeing is our retailers and brands being more attuned to that the path to the store, right? So whether it's a gas station screen, um, you know, maybe you'll be enticed to pop into the convenience store and pick something up that you just saw, or um, electric vehicle charging stations have become really popular for this too when they're placed by malls and by retailers. There's a lot of out of home adjacency to retail media. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, you're obviously a huge believer in the power <laughs> of digital out of home. Uh, what do you believe about the power or the potential of digital out of home that you wish that others could see? I think, again, it would just go back to consumers' reaction to it. So I, I really, and I'm looking, I have a, the Ogilvy on advertising book on my coffee table. The fun for advertising for me is really that consumer experience and making actually yeah, making someone fall in love with your brand, right? And out of home has such a special way to do this, not only because the creative possibilities are pretty much endless, um, but because people, it exists in the real world and people trust it as a result of that. Uh, the publishers, like there's a, a person that still has to manually approve creative, um, unlike much of the other rest of the realm of, of advertising where it's become more automated. So somebody really has to go in and put some thought into what's going to run. And I just, it, call me a dreamer. I just think this is such a, it's a beautiful experience. You can have so much fun with it. And when people trust the medium, they're more likely to trust your brand and your message. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, as we come to closing, are there any last thoughts that you'd like to share? Be interested to hear a little bit more about your thoughts on out of home. Um, I'm in the category of I'm first of all, thank you for taking the time because I learn a lot every time I do one of these. And I think I'm probably like a lot of people a little overwhelmed by the complexity and trying to understand where the real opportunities are, given that clearly there are opportunities, but you almost have to learn a new language around the dwell time around the screens, the positioning of the screens and the ability or not to buy into them programmatically because some could be set up where they're you know have a relatively weak connection to the internet and they as you say just run a loop and so all of these things add yet more complexity and i think i'm trying to understand when things get to scale like when is the sort of breakout moment where it becomes an absolute no-brainer for advertisers to move there rather than um some of the advertising you described i would describe as early adopters you know they're trying creative things in different environments and they know they're out trailblazing but i don't know that we've reached the okay it's like tv i can just buy a slot and behind the scenes everything magically happens I'm totally with you. And I, I, that's probably why I've been in the industry for as long as I have is it's just an underdog channel. And I like to root for the underdog and you know, I'll be satisfied when eventually it, it gets that, you know, spend that it deserves, I think. But um, because of the complexity, that is, again, why you can just bring in a specialist. You know, not every marketer needs to understand exactly how everything works but you do need to have a trusted partner that it is actually it's never going to be easy but it's more simple for a media planner and out of home to put something together than someone who you know is is primed in in search right absolutely absolutely hey i've enjoyed this conversation so much i want to thank you for taking the time and really wish you the best of luck in all of your endeavors in this space so thank wow. you so much Thank you.